on this edition of The Fifth Estate. Today, we are starting action. From a feel-good charity. We are weeded. To a full-blown controversy. I feel like my son was the victim of fraud. We Charity raised millions to build schoolhouses in Africa. I went to three We Days, and at the first one I heard, yeah, and you could build a school in Kenya. So we went to Kenya to see how many were actually built. All the money that was collected for this village doesn't add up. The logical question is, where's the money? Where did the money go? Why are you concerned about protecting your identity? What are you afraid of? I'm here in Kenya, a country of natural beauty, but plagued by crushing poverty. Canada's We Charity raised millions in donations to help people in this country. But where did all that money go? I'm Mark Kelly. This is The Fifth Estate. This is what draws people from around the world to the Maasai Mara region of Kenya. The splendor of unspoiled nature, where time seems to stand still. But a Canadian charity was drawn here by a different force, an overwhelming need to help in this rural and rugged region. In their promotional videos, We Charity, or Free the Children as it was originally known, said they were empowering villages here to lift themselves out of poverty by building fresh water wells, sustainable income projects, and badly needed schoolhouses for the local children. At center stage of fundraising events, the charismatic brothers who founded Free the Children, Mark and Craig Kielberger. Are you ready to change the world? We Day is generosity. We Day is the movement of our time. Stand up and make some noise. They staged events called We Days all across North America, packed with celebrities, pop stars, and powerful messages. It was all about kids helping kids around the world. Like Danielle, who raised money to help support a health clinic in India. And AJ, who raised money to build a school with his classroom in Sierra Leone, West Africa. And that hard work is called Adopt a Village. Adopt a Village meant targeting your donation to specific projects, like building schoolhouses for kids. That message resonated with Watson Jordan, a former teacher from North Carolina. I don't know if you've been to them, these We Days, which are really I have. hugely exciting. We Day, do you feel the power? And literally, I went to three We Days. And at the first one, I heard, yeah, and you could build a school in Kenya. And I was like, man, how impactful would that be for those kids to go from having no school to a school? So Watson raised money to build a schoolhouse in memory of his infant son, William. And it was really exciting. I mean, I was reading the email. We've decided your village is going to be ERCOT. I was like, great. Hi, everybody. My name is Avery Skog. Some of you may know me. There were also plenty of kids raising money for kids and posting videos on YouTube, like nine-year-old Avery Skog of Manitoba. Every time one of you makes a donation, I'll put your name on a brick. The charity told kids when they raised enough money, a schoolhouse would be built in rural Kenya. Once I've reached my goal of raising $10,000, I will send all the money to free the children. Jumbo, hello to all my friends at Davidson High School. My name is Mark Kielberger. We just wanted to say thank you, Laura. And when you raised enough money to build a schoolhouse, you might even get a video thanking you for your generosity. We say a big Asante Sana, thank you. It was a feel-good message that resonated across North America. The checks poured in from Toronto to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Surrey, BC, from schools, churches, community groups, hardworking volunteers out to change the world. It was a really special project. It was something that every student and teacher and you know their families knew about. Something that's very special uh, to me and, and close to my heart. Rukshan De Silva answered that call for help. 
Um, this is day 30. It's 1.49 centimeters long, and I've got $308.13. When he was a student at Iroquois Ridge High School outside Toronto, he grew out his beard to raise money for his grad class's fundraising project, building a schoolhouse in Kenya. We want to say a big thank you to the team over at Iroquois Ridge. Your generosity... The students and the community now felt they had a sister school in rural Kenya. And thank you for all of your support. Thank you, Iroquois Ridge. And a few years later, Rukshan got a chance to visit. I met with the teacher and he kind of gave me a tour of the old school. And then they showed me the new school as well that was constructed with the funds that we donated. And it was really proud to see everything that we had spent four years fundraising for, just to see the, the fruits of that labor. It was incredible. But in 2020, a political scandal that went all the way to the Prime Minister's office would tarnish the charity's shiny reputation. The WE charity has gotten a government contract to run the new... The Prime Minister is defending a new contract handed out by his government... That led to questions and concerns being raised by some of the charity's donors. I'm here today to speak for and on behalf of this little guy right here. This is Wesley Cowan. A parliamentary committee heard angry testimony from this man, Reed Cowan. Wesley's name, Wesley's face, Wesley's life of four years and his legacy were used to make money for Free the Children and We Charities. This is video of Cowan visiting the schoolhouse in Kenya. He fully funded in memory of his son Wesley, who died in a tragic accident. Today I want to tell you that in giving you this school, I am giving you my son. Cowan says he raised more than $160,000 with other donors, cheered on by Craig Kielberger. He told all of our donors during a well-televised fundraising that they would be building schools and that it, between 10 and for every ten and $12,000 raised, a school would be built. Cowan says he later learned his son's plaque was taken down and replaced by the plaque of another donor who funded the very same schoolhouse. I feel like my son was the victim of fraud. Today we have as witnesses Craig and Mark Kielberger. The Kielbergers, now in full damage control, brought their lawyer with them when they testified before MPs. Mr. Cowan is right to be upset and no words are sufficient to erase the grief that this error has compounded. The Kielberger said the plaque fiasco was all a terrible mix-up and quickly shifted the blame to others. How would this have happened in the sense that who is responsible for moving these plaques? It would have been in Kenya. It would have been a member of the Kenya team, theoretically. We want to research it. We want to get to the bottom of it. It shouldn't have happened. But MPs weren't buying it. The fact that you took that plaque down twice shows this wasn't an accident. This was willful. You sold and you got Mr. Cowan to take his son's death and legacy and, and build a story across America. And then when he was gone, you gave that school to someone else. How do you justify that? So firstly, um, what you described was not accurate, but, but here's where I agree with you. That it, was accurate. It's, he has footage of it. We've seen the pictures of the plaque. We are looking into them. The Kielbergers fought back. They said they were proud of their track record of building schools and thanked the kids who helped them. We have been disappointed in the conduct of all political parties in this matter. Because what was accomplished by educators and students in 7,000 schools is remarkable and deserves to be protected. It's been 25 years of helping to build over 1,500 schools and schoolhouses around the world, educating 200,000 children. But MPs wanted to know, where were those 1,500 schools located? Four weeks later, Parliament got a response. At the top of the list, Kenya, where We Charity said it had built 360 primary schoolhouses. The Fifth Estate decided to put that number, 360, to the test. Like with Cowan, were different donors told they had funded the very same schoolhouse? We Charity wouldn't tell us who donated to their schools, citing privacy concerns. So we scoured the internet, 
for anybody who had publicly said they had fully funded a primary schoolhouse in Kenya. We searched social media posts. We found old websites and created spreadsheets for 30 villages they were involved with in Kenya. It became clear donors believed they had fully funded more than 900 primary schoolhouses in Kenya, far higher than the 360 schoolhouses the charity said it has built. And that doesn't account for donations that weren't made public. Our research was revealing even more. We Charity sent this picture of a school to a donor who had fully funded it. But take a look. They sent that same picture to another donor who was told the same thing. And then we noticed the same thing happened again. The Fifth Estate also found photos of the same schools but from different angles, also sent to multiple donors. And it wasn't only kids or grieving parents making donations. The charity also had corporate partners, like RBC, whose campaigns funded schoolhouses and other projects in Kenya. There were nonprofit groups like Unstoppable. The American Foundation said they raised enough money to build 158 primary schoolhouses in Kenya for We Charity. I know that we can all use a little bit of inspiration. So here today with me is a couple of my heroes. You know them as the Kilberger brothers. And Canadian football legend Michael Pinball Clemens Charitable Foundation eventually funded the construction of 108 primary schoolhouses in Kenya. We've officially funded the 100th school. He's raised enough money to build 100 schools in developing countries. Please welcome Taylor Conroy. Our research shows a group called Change Heroes raised money to build dozens of schoolhouses in Kenya. We Day. Taylor Conroy was the founder and a We Day ambassador that we've come up with a way for you, from your phone, to raise enough money to build an entire schoolhouse in one day. Conroy traveled to Kenya, standing in front of those We Charity schools to thank the donors directly. Ms. Whitfield and the Vaughn Road Academy, this is Taylor Conroy and Philip, the Maasai warrior, here to say thank you for your massive contribution. Behind but our research turned up another curious find. And we're rolling. Hi, it's Taylor from Change Heroes. Footage posted on YouTube of Conroy thanking multiple donors in front of the same schoolhouse. Thank you to Miss Peltier and all of Margaret Jenkins Elementary School. And again. Elton, it's Taylor and this is one of the happiest days of my life. And again. Corey, this is a huge day for me because I'm finally getting to show you what you and your friends got together to build. Project. So as they say here in Kenya, Asante Sana. And for many donors, it was that connection to the bricks and mortar schoolhouse that they had funded that mattered most. Rakshanda Silva remembers the day he and his classmates reached their target. We went to actually donate the money in person um, at their office in Toronto. We wanted it to be an ongoing partnership. We didn't want it to be a one-time donation. So we're very clear on that and we're guaranteed that as well by uh, the founders of Free the Children. Watson Jordan felt the same way when he was sent a picture of the schoolhouse he believed his money built. I'd hoped to meet one or two of the kids so I could read them some books I never got to read to William. I think that would have been powerful for me. And that's something you're still hoping to do one day? I'm quite determined to at least go to the village. And if he went there, what would he find? He was sent a photo of schoolhouse number four in Irkat in memory of his son. Like Reed Cowan, would he discover a schoolhouse that was funded by other donors? Or would a schoolhouse be there at all? So we decided to go to Kenya and look for Watson Jordan's schoolhouse and Rakshan De Silva's and others. When we come back. It's a village that uh, we've been following closely. We want to find out how many schools actually exist in this community. Rural Kenya has long been the focus of Canada's We Charity. It says it's built 360 primary schoolhouses here with donors' money. But our research shows donors had given enough money to build more than 900 schoolhouses here. Unable to square the charity's numbers with our own, we came to Kenya to see for ourselves. We Charity schools are located in the Masai Mara region in southwest Kenya. So we left Nairobi uh, 
uh, shortly after four o'clock this morning. We've been driving for several hours and now we're in Narok County. This is where the We Charity, its efforts in Kenya began. And around here, there's no bigger supporter of the charity than the governor of Narok County, the Honorable Samuel Tunai. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. That's his camera crew filming us as we filmed him. I'm here as a great uh, promoter and supporter of WE because I've seen the impact and the transformation which they have done in the villages. You, as a government, you must always have to look for money elsewhere to meet some deficit in terms of your budget. And he made it clear, if I doubted the good work done by the charity, I was wrong. Why are you going to tell me to say we are doing a wrong job? The people who are employed there, the secondary schools which are built, why are you going to tell me to say they're not doing a good job? Your Excellency, what would you say if more money was raised for Kenya and Narok County than then was actually spent in Narok County? No, uh, let me not comment about that. What we've seen is with the We Charity is that when donors will donate to, to build a classroom in Kenya, they'll be sent a picture and they'll be told, for example, in the Senatoy, you have built a school. And they were sent that picture saying you have fully funded a classroom in the Senatoy. Hmm. But what we've also noticed is another group will have funded that classroom. But when we look, we see it's the same classroom. And they've both been told that they've fully funded it. And that doesn't seem to add up. Okay, I don't, uh, no comment on that. Mm. Well, okay, enjoy Kenya. And with that, we were told our interview was over. Thank you. But it wouldn't be the last time we would hear from the governor. Now we began our quest to visit villages following the donor's money. Yeah, Matoni, let's go to Matoni. Before arriving in Kenya, we had arranged for a visit to the village of Matoni with the school's headmaster. But moments after we arrived, an unidentified man showed up and spoke to the headmaster. What did he say? Our colleague, journalist John Njuru, who has reported on We Charity in Kenya, tells us we're no longer welcome. We've been told that uh, we should come back another time. So we'll come back another time. He said that he had received some few phone calls. So, so we are not welcome. Your presence is not welcome. As we wrapped up for the evening, we learn a lawyer for We Charity in Toronto had sent an email to the Fifth Estate. It contained direct quotes from our conversation with Governor Tunai just hours after our interview. Wee's lawyer said, it is clear that CBC has been presenting as fact, inaccurate information. CBC slandered We Charity today. We didn't know then, this would be just one part of an escalating campaign by the charity and its supporters to stop our investigation. We are approaching Erkat. You can see it at the horizon. We're just near it. It's the village of Erkat. It's a village that uh, we've been following closely. Looking at the number of schools that we've found on our database, and now we want to find out how many schools actually existed in this community. We arrive on a Saturday when school is out. We're hoping to find school number four. It's the schoolhouse Watson Jordan was sent a picture of in memory of his son. Our spreadsheets show every schoolhouse here has a story, but donors may not know the full story. There it is. School number four. School number four. This was the one that was funded by Watson Jordan. But as we now know, it was also funded by several other donors. 
Our research shows school number four was fully funded at least four times over. And it wasn't just school number four. We have a picture of another schoolhouse that turned up in our online searches over and over again. This school would also be funded by multiple other groups. Absolutely. Clutch of Humanity, this was funded by them, as it was Unstoppable, Madame E. Holmes, Gilgan Family. In all, our research showed we charity told donors they had fully funded 70 primary schoolhouses here. The total number on the ground? 28. But again, our visit is cut short. John tells us we must leave. Right now you need to go because calls have been made and things are really bad. It turns out the calls are coming from the governor's office. Here is Governor Tonui, who just called. Oh, really? Why would the governor be calling us? John believed the governor was sending a message for us to stop visiting villages in his county. We travel from Urkat to the village of Rongina. We're looking for the school that nine-year-old Avery Skog funded from his home in Morris, Manitoba. One, two, three. One, two, three. Look at the stones. I think you found it. That's the one. This is a school funded by Roots Canada, RBC, and this is a school that was funded by Avery Scott. And the schoolhouses are pretty basic. Desks, chairs, and a blackboard. An aerial view puts this village into perspective. Our research revealed donors were told they had fully funded 55 schoolhouses here. In fact, there are only 12 schoolhouses and a library. It just doesn't add up. All the money that was collected for this village, it doesn't add up. Our next stop was an interview with We Charity to compare numbers. We arrive at the charity's compound in Narok County, their crown jewel. This is where the charity wanted us to talk to Carol Mora. She's a senior executive with We. Carol took me on a tour of the We campus here. You can see an average of 100 patients, yeah. It includes the Baraka Hospital, complete with a maternity ward, surgical theater, and COVID vaccine clinic. Patients prefer here. Because so a patient will say, I want to be taken care of at Baraka. And why do they prefer here? Because of our care, yeah. Then there's the Kisaruni Girls High School and the Boys High School. How many students, uh, how many girls are there? 280. All of this paid for by generous donations acknowledged by donor plaque after donor plaque. I sat down for our interview with Carol at the Wee College just across the road. And she tells me our quest to count schools is misguided. You have a spreadsheet where you're counting the number of buildings, but it's not about the infrastructure. It's about the impact, the lives that are touched every single day. Do you think it's wrong for us to be coming to, to count the buildings, to, to, to see uh, what has been done on the ground? That's the wrong approach, Mark. That clearly shows that you don't understand our model. Carol says the WE Charity model has donors fund what they call pillars, such as access to clean water, health care, or in this case, education. Money for education would build schoolhouses and libraries and kitchens and teachers' accommodations but our research accounted for those donations too. We have always tried our best to be very clear with our donors. Carol insists donors knew their money was pooled for various projects and photos sent to donors did not mean they fully funded that school. When a donor funds a village, we will definitely send a picture from that village to the donor. And it's not just one donor funding this village because it's not just an empty classroom. We have learners in that classroom, learners who are getting school meals, who are getting, you know, health screenings. We have teacher trainings that are happening. All this programming takes place together with the infrastructure. But after telling us we shouldn't be counting schools, it turned out that's exactly what we charity had been doing all spring and summer, ever since the Fifth Estate began our investigation. And it was no longer 360, the number provided to Parliament, 
Far from it. The correct number is 852. We had not included the renovations. We had not included the high, our high schools. We had not included our regional high schools. We had also not included the new constructions and also the constructions that had been delayed because of COVID. So can I just ask, why was the number 360 provided at all? That's nowhere near the number that you came up with. Why provide that number? Because Parliament wanted us to give them, you know, the, the number of, of uh, structures that we had. Mm -hmm. And we had not factored in all this before giving that number. So we included all that for us to, to now have the final number of 852. What does renovations have to do with... Mark, why don't we just stick to the phone? <laughs> and then... A closer look at that new number includes high schools, kitchens, even latrines, which inflated the total count. But the charity's own count confirms the number of primary school houses built in Kenya, 360. Still, the charity insists all the money donated to Kenya was spent in Kenya. And for those villages that have benefited, loyalty to WE is unconditional. In the village of Pembiniat, they proudly hoist the WE charity flag for visiting journalists from Canada. We have drilled the water. Uh -huh. All these kind of things that have been built here uh -huh. was, was just done by the, by the WE, the charity. Mm -hmm. Here, we wanted to find one particular schoolhouse. This is it. This is the, the classroom that was funded by Rukshan De Silva. Did Rukshan know the schoolhouse his classmates called their own was paid for by others? In Pimbiniat, we counted 20 schoolhouses. Our spreadsheet shows We Charity had received donations to fully fund 48. And on it went, using our spreadsheet count to compare with We Charity's count in village after village after village. So were all donors told their money would be pooled with others to build other projects, as Carol Morrow had told us? Back in Nairobi, we called Rukshan De Silva to ask. Were you told that there were other donors who had funded that very same school? No. That you were part of something bigger, that your money was going into a big pot? No. We were told that that would be Iroquois school that we had funded. In fact, what Rukshan didn't know is the picture he took of that schoolhouse when he visited Pembiniat contained a clue that it was credited to another group. I, I saw a picture that you took over there that you would post of your school. On the top right from the door, there are letters over that door. M, P, C, F, and a number. Did, did you know what, the, what that stood for? No. Is that's Michael Pinball Clemens Foundation. He had already fully funded that school. Were you aware of that? No, I wasn't aware of that. If what you're saying is true, that's, that's really disappointing. It's a shame. Later that evening, we were contacted by a former WE employee who wanted to talk. Why are you concerned about protecting your identity? Like, what are you afraid of? They said they feared legal reprisals from the charity. The source said it was common practice to overfund projects in Kenya, not just the schoolhouses. Over and over again. But why was it the norm? It was making money. Who was calling the shots? Who was making this happen? Was, was this the, the people on the ground in Kenya who decided that this was a good idea? The source said the practice had gone on for years. Witnessed it. He said this was part of the business plan of the model. As he said, basically it was free money. 
community charity to sell the same school room over and over again. Less than an hour after that call, we had a text from our team in Toronto. The CBC had received a letter from Kenya's Ministry of the Interior. It contained unfounded allegations we had committed criminal acts in Kenya, including trespassing on government property. For some reason, the letter was CC'd to the WE organization. Concern for our safety, CBC instructed us to head to the airport immediately. Our fact-finding mission in Kenya was over. When we come back... What happens? Why were these donors being misled about how their money would be spent? It's just wrong. For more about our investigations, sign up to get the Fifth Estate's weekly newsletter. We'll keep you posted on stories we've brought you and share some behind-the-scenes details. Head to our website, cbc.ca slash fifth, and subscribe there. Welcome to Cribs East Africa style. My name is Craig Kielberger. I'm the founder of Free the Children and also... A decade ago, Craig Kielberger made this video for MTV fans across North America. Uh, Sankai, how you doing? Maasai warrior, great friend of mine. He lives here. This villa is where high net worth donors stayed in Kenya, part of the for-profit side of the WE organization. But let me show you the actual crib. This is home. As the Kielbergers made doing good feel good. Welcome to my bathroom. Hang out, chill out, soak out, and enjoy the view over the Maasai Mara in Kenya. And their overtures to kids were on the scale of lavish rock concerts. We can be anything and do everything, as long as we set our minds to it. But what was happening behind the scenes as donor money came pouring in? The Fifth Estate spoke with dozens of people formerly and currently connected to the organization. One former staffer agreed to chat by WhatsApp. I asked, why are you concerned about keeping your identity hidden? Legal, but also knowing how powerful the Kielberger brothers are. The source told me overfunding of schoolhouses was a strategic decision by senior leaders. The brothers were aware of all of this and would be the ones to accept the risk of doing project funding this way. It was always about the ends, the overall goal. If that was ambitious and inherently good, the means didn't seem to matter. But I wondered, how is that inherently good? The response? what they wanted to achieve was more important than how they went about it. Others we spoke to said they raised concerns money was being donated for projects that were already paid for. You know the Kielbergers were warned, you're playing with fire here. I don't know how they thought they could get away with it for so long. They were very, very good at having people have an experience that they will never question. rumblings of troubles at We Charity made their way to the United States, where the charity has raised nearly $200 million in donations in the last decade. In Chicago, the group Charity Watch rates charities for prospective donors. In 2020, the watchdog suspended its rating of We Charity, citing concerns about governance. Executive Director Lori Styron is an accountant with 15 years' experience in the charitable sector. Here's one group called Hope. I showed her the duplicate photos we charity sent to multiple donors. Well, here's another organization and said, you have funded that school room. <laughs> right. So it looks like the same school, doesn't it? It certainly does. I yeah. Mean, and I mean, we put them side by side. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Same clouds and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's highly problematic because it doesn't look like it was a mistake. It looks like it was a strategy, a fundraising strategy to compel donors to give more money on the promise that they would be accomplishing something very, very specific with their donation. The donors and the general public really needs to you know, demand that this is investigated. 
But that's not what all donors wanted. Prompted by our investigation, a group of donors, many of whom said they'd been to Kenya to see We Charities projects, launched an aggressive campaign to stop our investigation. We do not agree with their thesis that we, as donors, were misled. Emails sent to the editor-in-chief of CBC News saying the charity used their money for good works in Kenya, and our reporting would undermine that. We are asking you to prevent further damage to the communities in Kenya. Emails signed by the former COO of BlackBerry, the founder of Lululemon, Michael Pinball Clemens, Change Heroes Taylor Conroy, a former executive of the Royal Bank of Canada, and even former Prime Minister Kim Campbell. We do not see any public interest in this kind of journalism. The emails arrived for days. Then a clue as to who was involved in the campaign, at the bottom of an email thread, with the heading, Draft for Consideration, a high-profile donor got approval from Craig Kielberger before sending it to the president of the CBC. By then, a source, aware of the charity's denials of wrongdoing, wanted us to know what was happening inside the charity and provided us with some of the charity's own internal spreadsheets, records of donations from We Charity's wealthiest and most prized donors. In the village of Rongina, the records show eight high net worth donors paid for the exact same schoolhouse. In Irkat, seven major donors and foundations paid for the same three schoolhouses. The leaked documents also show the same $10,000 schoolhouse in Irkat was also sold to other donors for $12,000, even $15,000. In Essanoni, it states another donor was charged $22,500 US for a single schoolhouse. And then there are the comments in the margins about how to handle those wealthy philanthropists who might be asking questions. Richard Branson's Virgin Atlantic wasn't a problem, as they have not asked us the status of the project. A California philanthropist, Gabby Gorbani, was tricky, so a project not yet built will likely be something we have to commit to. Another wealthy family seemed easier to deal with, as they don't seem to be tracking items line for line. We showed those documents to Lori Styron. How does that strike you when you see the comments in the margins talking about the donors? This one's going to be asking questions. That one doesn't ask questions, so we don't have to worry about that. There's a few choice words I have to <laughs> It's incredibly condescending to say, we're going to rely on the, you know, ignorance. I don't mean that in a negative connotation. The average donor doesn't have a background to be able to root all of this out. Yeah, I guess part of me is just surprised that they would put it in writing. Right, they don't really have plausible deniability here when it's in writing. I mean, it's in black and white. It really isn't just, a, just an error, right? It's not just they got in over their heads on one school. Mm -hmm. It looks to be an active strategy to raise a lot of money. And then they're relying on donors not asking questions in order to continue to operate this way. And it's just, it's just wrong. When we come back, I have a request for the rich and the powerful and the well-connected. Come out of hiding on this matter and go on the record as I have had to do today. The Kielbergers first came to this rugged region of Kenya in the early 2000s. They convinced kids back home to fundraise for badly needed schools here, water systems and other sustainable projects. Over the years, hundreds of schools were built. Our investigation has revealed far more schools were funded than were actually built. Leading to an inevitable question from the executive director of Charity Watch. The logical question is, where's the money? Where did the money go? It went for the good. It went for charitable works. It went to, to help people in Kenya. They do need to be able to quantify that. And not to mention, even if it did go to good programmatic activities, charities still have an ethical obligation, in some cases a legal obligation, 
to carry out the specific programs that they promised the donor they would carry out with that donation. Days before this broadcast, another lawyer's letter from We Charity. The charity has hired a forensic accountant to review the flow of funds involved in its Kenyan projects. The charity insists our research into donor funding is flawed, saying donor claims on social media are inaccurate and imprecise while offering no proof of that claim. The charity continues to claim donors are not told they are funding a schoolhouse. Donors are told that their donations will be pooled with others to do the most good in a given region or village. So how then to explain this? We're happy to announce da -da -da -da, we have classroom number two. This shirt built a school in Africa. So was this a promise to kids or nothing more than a marketing strategy? If donors did not fully fund schools, why are there so many videos telling them their money would do just that? That $10,000 will fully construct a schoolhouse in Kenya to empower hundreds and hundreds of children. 57 million children around the world dream of going to school. Video is produced by We Charity itself and its major partners. $20 provides one brick. 500 bricks build a school. Go to freethechildren.com slash we create change. Charities are really good at telling stories. Any nonprofit organization can point to a handful of good deeds that they've done. And donors need to be very careful to not be overly impressed by that. We need to the public to too deserves answers, says Lori Styron. These are public resources. Charities are subsidized by the rest of us. They don't pay tax on their income. They're here by our collective grace that they exist. Things get investigated when the public demands it. If you wanna know what happened to those schools, you wanna know what happened to that money, demand it. And that's precisely what Reed Cowan urged donors to do. I have a request for the rich and the powerful and the well-connected, the celebrity and the corporate set who lent their power to the elevation of Free the Children and We Charities. I'm asking that you come out of hiding on this matter and go on the record as I have had to do today. We did! To all of the kids, I would say to them that they have every right to seek answers and transparency and uh, accountability of Free the Children and We Charities. Cowan demanded $20 million in damages from the charity in exchange for his silence on the issue of donor financing. The charity called his demands extortion. In 2020, We Charity announced it was winding down its Canadian operations. The consequences of COVID, political scandal, and dwindling donations. The charity recently sold its head office in Toronto. It says it wants to concentrate its efforts on projects in Kenya, like building schoolhouses. So where does this leave Watson Jordan? He was told he paid for his schoolhouse in Urkat and was sent this photo of school number four in memory of his son. At the end, you know, I've been deceived. Lying to people who've lost children about doing something good on their behalf, that doesn't seem like an awesome group of people to lie to. School number four sits atop a hill in the village of Urkat fully funded by at least four other donors. The question is, how many more people were sold a promise but whose schoolhouses were never built? It's a question we try to answer. If you have a story you think needs to be told, send us your tips to fifthtips at cbc.ca. For a more confidential way to contact us, visit our website at cbc.ca slash fifth and click on Secure Drop. 